in my studies, um, I have gravitated towards a couple of kind of uh, spiritual ascended masters is what I'll call them. And one of them that I feel pretty like so akin with is Green Tara. Um, first of all, she has 21 emanations and what woman doesn't have 21 emanations, right? All different sides to her. And a lot of what she brings through is there's joyous wrath and fierce compassion. And those are phrases that when I read them for the first time, like dove all the way through me, like radiated out from my center because I will always be a bit of a warrior and I feel passionate and strongly and am not afraid to charge up the hill. And yet what is coming forth for me now, generally, energetically, is a much softer, it's kind of like I'm going to wear that mountain down with um, not crashing ocean waves, but like one little uh, wait, ripplet at a time. Um, and, and it's just because I don't, I, I don't need to wave the banner all the time anymore. I don't need to proclaim anymore. It can be a little more subtle than that. And to me, that's a sign that I really learned the lesson. You know, it's less about trumpeting because that tends to be ego led and a little more about coming really from the heart of me. And, but I want to go back to that phrase, fierce compassion and why I love everything about it. Um, I think that to love yourself, you have to be fierce because we are programmed to, to easily find fault. And, and I'm not saying not to hold yourself to a good standard and I'm not saying not to strive for excellence. That's something that I talk about a lot. I, I, I feel strongly about that, but it's very easy. It's almost letting yourself off the hook by going after yourself. And we all do it. I definitely do it. You know, why didn't you? Why couldn't you? And actually a, a comment was left that said, you know, I was talking about discipline, how it's so important. And the comment was, are you sure you're not just replacing perfectionism with the word discipline? And I was like, oh, because it's a fine line. And I, I want to sit with that for a while. But the fierce compassion means that you are loving yourself with no pity that you are loving yourself cleanly and that you're making yourself take responsibility for what, for what's really yours, but you're not also allowing yourself to drown in the shithead that you are. Because in my experience, in my own experience, and I've seen it in others is once you decide that you fucked up, that you're an asshole, you're like, ah, eh, well, well, why fucking bother? And it kind of gets you off the hook to either act badly, indulge yourself in behavior that you know doesn't serve you, um, or you just whip yourself, which is really just as self-indulgent as, you know, you think that you're punishing yourself because you're not good enough. That's still your ego fucking with you. Loving yourself clean with really clear compassion, compassion for what you did, responsibility for the stuff that you participated in and the ability to let the rest go and not carry the burden. Look at it, you know, work with it, see what you want to change and not do next time and, and put it down. Don't nurse it. You've got to get that energy moving so it's up and out of you or it will come back again and again and again until you do. So I hope today that you can offer yourself a little dose of fierce compassion. Love yourself fiercely because that clean tip of the spear of love is a beautiful place to sit. I can't maintain it, but I get there. I get in and out of it. And I'm trying to spend more of my, more and more of my time there as I look at more and more of the stuff that holds me back, of my own excuses, of my own stories that I'm still telling. They're less powerful, but they're still there. Um, and I want them to release their grip. I have too much to do. I don't want to be slowed down by something that my heart knows isn't true. And my brain keeps trying to suck me in there. So fierce compassion is a huge weapon against getting stuck back in the story. 
because it allows you to view it, have a little grace for yourself and move the fuck on. Don't get stuck in the story. I had this vision during a, me a meditation the other day of how many people that walk around are just in a shroud, a sh like a sheer shroud of linen is what it looked like. Like you could see through it, but it was, you know, woven. Um, it was sheer-ish, but it wasn't sheer like, like a silky thing. It was sheer like a rough woven thing. And those people are people that are even aren't aware that their shadow game is running their lives. Right. And then I saw other people, I would hope to think that I'm like that, where the shadow's there, but you see them kind of step into the light, step back in, step into light, step back in. And it's a process. You don't get to stay in one place. Um, it's work to step into the light and it's brave to step into light. It's easy to languish in the dark. The what light requires a lot more fucking work, but I always say it's worth it because in the light is freedom and I want to be free. I want to be free from my story. I want to be free from my own limitations. I want to be free from others' expectations. I just want to live free. So again, I offer that you give yourself a dose of some fierce compassion today. And I will see you tomorrow.